Okay, hi guys. So, as per your request on Facebook, I'm doing an updated 2013 version of my corset collection. And uh, let me tell you now that this is actually not even all of them. Um, I have a few more that are not real corsets and they're sort of also uh, retired corsets that I don't wear anymore. They're not functional anymore. So this is just my functional corset collection. And I have about 50. So uh, get yourself a drink because this is going to take a while. And just a quick note that after this corset collection video, I'm probably going to be selling quite a few of these because I don't wear some of them as often as I wear others. So uh, keep an eye peeled if you are approximately my size because I'm probably going to be selling some of these corsets at about half their retail value. So I'm going to start with the off the rack or the standard size courses and I had done a ton of leatherotics reviews in the past um, but I only have two now because I've given some to friends and I've sold a couple others. Um, so there's this skirted corset or corset dress and then there is this leather overbust and this leather is really really soft when they say it's like butter soft they're not joking um i was almost concerned that this was not going to hold up on me but it actually has held up pretty well and here is a corset that i got from bad attitude boutique and um i'm going to put the links to all the reviews for these corsets that i'm showing you in the description below in case you want to learn any more about this so yeah this was from bad attitude boutique when they still had their etsy shop open unfortunately they don't anymore and I also have this Timeless Trends corset. Uh, actually, this one is their Black Iris line, which is more for their distributors since I am a distributor now for them. Um, so this one is a long line corset, as you can see with the hip, uh, hip ties here. And I still need to review this one, but I hope to do that later on in the summer. And then there are my two corsets from Ms. Martha's Corset Shop. So this is the corset vest in the red silk. And this is my leather geometric cincher. And this cincher is probably one of my most comfortable corsets. And I have three corsets from Orchard Corset. So this is their uh, overbust corset, now called the 511 corset. It's no longer the 411 because they wanted to um, basically distinguish between overbust and, and underbust corsets. And this is in the uh, tartan twill. And I actually much prefer this material to their satin corsets. Um, I also was able to take home two prototypes when I was there this past February. So here is one of them and I'm going to show you a close up of it because it's really cool. Um, it is a pink satin but it also has a metallic netting overlay and I was asked to test this out um, to see if the uh, netting would uh, rip or anything under strenuous use. Um, this is another prototype that I was asked to try out. Um, I was wearing this one in my video with the interview with Orchard Corset. And this is a 411. I will be reviewing this one later on in the summer as well. For Axford's corsets, this is their C242. So it has the uh, pink satin and a white lace overlay. And I did have another overbust corset from them, but it, like I said last year, I gave it to my sister because she's a lot shorter than I am. So it fit her more like an overbust, whereas on me, it fit more like a demi bust. So there is that. And this is my Josephine Underbust Corset by Isabella Corsetry. And I got so many requests for this one. This is probably still one of my most popular uh, underbust corsets that I had reviewed ever. Um, and here is also my Méchant Corset that I just recently reviewed uh, a few weeks ago, actually. And just a couple more off the rack corsets here. This is the only What Katie Did corset I have left because I just recently sold um, my last Morticia corset. But this is my Floral Antoinette corset and I still get a ton of compliments whenever I wear it. Uh, this one I believe is the Audrey corset from uh, Eternal Spirits. And that one is probably my most expensive off the rack corset because this retails for about $400 I think. And this is the standard size Mimosa Cupped Overbust from Versatile Corsets. And it was this corset that actually made me fall in love with cupped overbust because they're just really comfortable. I have two overbust corsets from Boom Boom Baby Boutique. This is the pewter sort of silver uh, overbust with the floral designs and the lace overlay. This was the um, featured corset of March. 
and I also have this overbus which is really cool because it has fan lacing in the back. Um, this overbus I will be reviewing a little bit later on. I'm hoping not next year <laughs> but um, since I am only featuring one designer per month then it might take as that long but this one is so cool because it just it has straps everywhere and it's just so fun to wear. And this is a standard size MF1331 underbust from Morgana Femme Couture, bought off their Etsy store. But if you buy corsets off their website, then they are made to measure. So there is that difference there. But I still get a ton of compliments on that corset. Um, this corset might look familiar to you because it's the Wasted Creations corset that I just finished my seasoning mini series with. Um, here is a tea stained underbust corset made by Jupiter Moon 3 and I also bought this off her Etsy store and it's absolutely gorgeous with all the lace over it. Um, so I will be reviewing that one a little bit later on. I hadn't reviewed that one yet. And this is my red training underbust corset from Heavenly Corsets, also known as L Corsets. And this was my first um, purchased training back lacing corset. My first actual training corset was my front lacing one by Berserk, which is no longer uh, available anymore, but this was my first back lacing corset, so I've had this for so long. But this is a corset that I've mostly trained in for the past year or so, and this is the Summer Mesh uh, corset by Contour Corsets, and you can see it's extremely curvy, totally different to any other corset I've owned before because it doesn't have a waist tape, and um, this uh, material is just this mesh that allows your skin to breathe. It closes with a zipper, which I'm not used to. Um, totally different to any other corset I've ever had, but it is one of my best training corsets that I've tried. And here is a black twill sugar kitty corset that I just recently purchased secondhand from my body double living in South Africa. And uh, this is really fun to wear, extremely curvy, cut cups the rib cage. And here are the two corsets that I own from Serendi. So this one is the overbust that I had made the featured uh, corset for January. And this is the underbust corset with uh, the chain details taken off. I take off the chain details to store it just so um, the chains don't get caught and, and make pulls in the silk here. Um, and I had reviewed this one last year as well. And now moving on to the Puiman corsets. I have three from him now. So this is the Wicked Plunge overbust that I had purchased off Etsy. This is the uh, regular plunge corset that I purchased actually from a model. So I purchased this third or fourth hand. It's really been through the ringer and I'm very impressed that it's held up as well as it has. And this is the first custom uh, corset that I ordered directly from Puimond, uh, made to measure. And this one is extremely curvy. This was my featured corset for April. So I'll put the link in the description for the um, review to that. I now have several corsets from Sparkle Run. So here is the cincher that I love. Still one of my favorite corsets to wear. One of my uh, most comfortable corsets to wear. Uh, also, you might remember this very special overbust that I had custom made from her. Still love it. I still keep it in a box with the acid-free uh, tissue paper and everything just to make sure it doesn't fade. I will keep this one for the rest of my life and then some. <laughs> and one that you might not have seen before is this sort of dusty rose overbust with a uh, lace detail and I absolutely love this. I believe this is her bird's wing style so it has a whole bunch of really tiny uh, panels and each panel has one bone in it and it's just so unique. The fit is really lovely. Unfortunately this is a little bit on the small side so it has a large gap but it's still really lovely nonetheless. And here is an underbust version of this uh, bird's wing style pattern and um, I, I just love this one so much. Like the fit is just so unique and it just fits around curves absolutely beautifully. And this is the one and only corset that I own from Electra Designs. I purchased this off her Etsy store many years ago and the fit of this is just phenomenal. This was my featured corset of February and I am just waiting for Alexis to start taking commissions again because I need an underbust from her. Um, her patterns are just one of the most comfortable I've ever tried. And here are some of the local corsets that I have. So this one was made by Kate of Totally Wasted who lives in Toronto most of the time. And um, this is a custom made taffeta black underbust corset with lace detail and uh, Swarovski crystals. Absolutely beautiful shape. It gives me an easy 
a five inch reduction without even making it look like it's that difficult. <laughs> and this is a Starker's corset that I purchased off uh, Diana's sample sale, I believe uh, last year or two years ago. And um, like I said before, really heavy duty. It's a really good training corset. It's taken me a while to cinch down in this because it was not made to my measurements. Um, but I really love how low cut it is on the ribs because the waistband is right there. Um, so I'm actually able to move and bend and, and get errands done in this corset pr pretty easily. Um, and now for a few other corsets that are not so local. <laughs> um, these are the two corsets that I have from Madame Cher, who lives in Brazil. And um, I showed the unboxing for these videos. So this is another cupped corset, my second cupped corset, and I am just so in love with cupped corsets now. I'm really looking forward to wearing this corset a lot this summer, as well as this one, which is a mesh sort of ribbon cincher. And this is just, it was incredibly comfortable even from the first time I laced it down. So I know that seasoning this corset is going to be extremely easy. I'm going to have to really control myself to not cinch down too much in this right away. Now here are a couple of corsets that you have not seen before and these two are from The Bad Button and um, these ones were purchased off her Etsy store as well. These ones are a little bit bigger so I love to wear these when I'm going out dancing or for dinner banquets and everything because they're just so so lovely that you know like you, you have to show them off but at the same time it gives me a little bit more mobility when I want to be eating and dancing all night. So these have come in so handy already and I'm really looking forward to showing these uh, to you in a review later on this autumn. And one thing that just blew my mind was this is the Hug Me Center made by Jill of Bespoke Corsets. And Jill put this up on auction for Sydney Eileen's fundraiser. This was purchased for $750, I believe. And um, she had given all of that money to the Sydney Eileen fundraiser. And the uh, person who had purchased this corset sent it to me. So they didn't even end up with anything at all. And I just, I am so just flabbergasted by their incredible generosity. And I'm going to show you some of my homemade corsets, which probably will look like a kindergarten project next to the couture corsets that I just finished showing you. But this is my Disco Armadillo corset, and this was uh, basically a test to see if I can make a ribbon corset out of little pieces of vinyl. Um, because my local fabric store was just uh, selling these like 50% off, it was a ridiculous amount. And so I bought a whole bunch of them and just, you know, decided to see what I could make with them, basically. Um, this is the Christmas puffy corset that I still can't decide if it's totally tacky or totally fabulous, but this was made out of a uh, smocked pillowcase. And then I decorated with uh, gold trim, um, gold boning channels, binding, and also a totally gold inside. And this is really, really comfy to wear because it's all slick and slippery inside. This is my famous Sebastian corset, named such because the outside is crab red and the inside has some Little Mermaid lining. Um, this is still one of my favorite corsets <laughs> and I am rather proud of this one. Here is my Jamaican underbust corset that I wear every August 6th for a Jamaican Independence Day. Here is the rainbow ribbon corset that I still need to add a lining into. I am going to do that at some point. Um, this one was made out of individual uh, blanket binding ribbons that I had interfaced and backed onto a sturdy cotton so that it wouldn't stretch. And I do love the way that it turned out, especially the back. It just looks like almost iridescent. And this is my flexible sports mesh corset made out of black satin coutille and flexible sports mesh. So this one is so comfortable and it allows me to like move around that I actually sleep in this one. And I didn't really like sleeping in a corset until I made this one. But this one actually allows me to just, you know, roll around in my sleep if I need to. Um, and because it's the diamond in the front isn't absolutely perfect, then I don't usually wear this out anyways. But this one is super convenient to have. I'm really happy I made this one. And these are also corsets that you have not seen before. These are actually men's corsets, so I cannot wear them. But these were formerly owned by uh, Igap Tezrock. So corset page spelled backwards. One of the more prominent um, male tight lacers that uh, have videos here on YouTube. These three corsets here are made by Creations La Scarpolette. Uh, La Scarpolette basically means a swing. Um, this company or this woman who uh, made these corsets 
she was just so famous um, before I even came on the corset scene and I would have died to get a, a custom made corset from her but then uh, she just got overworked and she sort of disappeared from the scene but her um, her corsets were just legendary and so I just feel like the luckiest person in the world to own these corsets, even though I know that they will never fit me. But it's also a really good study in how male corsets are made differently to female corsets. And I will review these later on. Obviously, I can't review the fit, but I can direct you to Agat Tezrok's um, uh, videos so that you can see how it fits on them because it's absolutely phenomenal. This last corset is by JC Creations in Amsterdam and this one is also really cool because it's made from a uh, black spot brooch. Um, so I can review these later on um, but once again can't can't talk about the fit but I thank you <laughs> thank you to the man who sent me these courses because I was just in heaven to be able to see the construction of these and uh, just own a little piece of I guess uh, relatively modern history all right, so thank you to all five of you who have actually sat through this entire video. Um, the tag still applies, so if you have two or three or more corsets, then make a video of it and post it as a video response down below. Let's keep this going. Um, don't forget that I do have some of these corsets up for sale, so you can check out my website or follow me on Facebook for notifications if you are somewhere around my size. Um, I do have measurements also on my About Lucy page on my website in case you wanted to compare your measurements with mine. Um, thank you guys so much. And and I will see you next week for the uh, next corset video. Bye.